Do you know the signs of difficulty breathing in a child? This may be one of the most important videos you will watch to know it's time to get your child evaluated. Respiratory distress in children can be a frightening experience for both the child and their caregivers, but knowing if your child is in respiratory distress can help you know if you need to get your child evaluated. Today I'll discuss various common signs and symptoms of respiratory distress, including some videos submitted by our Peds Doc Talk community. And make sure you stick around until the end when I go over how to count a respiratory rate, a useful piece of information in determining a child's breathing status. Respiratory distress is when a child shows signs of trouble breathing due to their body not getting enough oxygen. This can occur due to a variety of reasons, including respiratory infections like pneumonia or bronchiolitis, asthma attacks, allergic reactions, or even foreign objects blocking their airway. Various issues with the nervous system, GI system, endocrine system, or cardiovascular system can also cause respiratory distress. The body tries to compensate for reduced airflow and decreased oxygen levels by working harder to get more air in. Some signs of respiratory distress include increased work of breathing, changes in skin color, behavioral changes accompanied by the distress, and rapid breathing. Let's go over what increased work of breathing can look like. This can present with flaring nostrils, retractions, so sucking in above the chest, in between the ribs or under the ribs, or their head is bobbing with each breath. Sometimes you can also hear abnormal sounds with each breath, like a low pitched grunting noise or wheezing, which sounds like a high pitched ee sound. These sounds will typically be accompanied by other signs of respiratory distress that I mentioned. Before we look at some examples, your clinician may refer to something called retractions, which is a significant sign of respiratory distress and can appear in various parts of the body like pictured here. Supra means above and sub means below. Clavicular is the clavicle or collarbone and costal refers to the ribs. So supraclavicular retractions refers to retractions above the clavicle or collarbone. Intercostal is between the ribs, not just on top, but all through the chest where the ribs are. Suprasternal is above the sternum, which is the U-shaped bone between your collarbone. Substernal, which is under the sternum. And subcostal, which is below the rib cage. Now let's look at some examples. Here are a couple examples of head bobbing. In these videos, you can see the head bobbing with every breath. Here is an example of nasal flaring with suprasternal retractions, which are retractions right above the sternum. Here is an example of nasal flaring, suprasternal retractions, intercostal retractions, and subcostal retractions. Basically, the entire chest wall is activated. Here is an example of substernal retractions. In children, it can be hard to distinguish between intercostal retractions between the ribs versus subcostal retractions, like in these two videos. But you can tell there is distress if either is noted and that pulling is noted above the ribs, in between the ribs, or below the ribs. Now it's important to differentiate noisy breathing due to congestion. When kids are congested and have that post-nasal drip, you can sometimes hear a chest rattling sound with each breath. This sound should resolve with coughing and should not be accompanied by any other signs of increased work of breathing, like the retractions that I mentioned. So if you notice your child making an unusual sound when they're breathing, look for the signs that I mentioned. Head bobbing, retractions, and or those nostrils flaring in and out. Are they breathing comfortably and easily? Are they otherwise feeling well? Is the sound intermittent and does it clear when they cough? If so, the noise is just due to congestion and no intervention is needed. And this is something I commonly see because of the child's anatomy, that upper airway or nasal congestion can make parents feel like it's in their chest when it actually may not be. Here are a few examples of noisy breathing where the child is labored. <laughs> In this one, you can hear noisy breathing and notice head bobbing. 
In this one, you can hear an abnormal sound and see head bobbing. And if you look closely at the chest, you can see retractions. In this one, you hear a whistle, which is a noisy breathing sound and can hear it at a rapid pace. And also if you look at the shirt, you can see retractions in the chest wall. In this one, you can hear congestion, which can be typical, but you see retractions, which are not normal. Oftentimes, parents of babies under three months will be concerned about their baby's breathing. And yes, newborns are very noisy because of their anatomy. However, I want to show you a video of an atypical breathing pattern in a little baby that would warrant evaluation. <laughs> You can hear noisy breathing, which is common in newborns, and sometimes grunting can be common too. However, if you look at the neck, you can see tugging and that the head is bobbing. So make sure to always evaluate the neck and the chest and assess for head bobbing if you are concerned about noisy breathing or sounds of breathing concerns in your child. When it comes to common respiratory sounds, your clinician may use terms like ronchi, rails, wheezing, or strider. Many of these are only heard with the stethoscope, but I do want to play the sound of strider and an expiratory wheeze, which is a wheeze when you breathe out. Here is an expiratory wheeze. Here is strider. These are important sounds in pediatrics that can be a sign of infectious or obstructive issues. So if you hear these sounds and your child is in distress, please get them evaluated. Increased worker breathing is an important aspect. And besides that, also watch for changes in skin color. A bluish tint around the lips or fingertips is a sign of decreased oxygen levels. And if noted, you need to call 911 or seek medical attention immediately. Kids in respiratory distress will also often exhibit behavioral changes. They can become unusually fussy or agitated or on the other extreme, overly sleepy and listless with that difficulty breathing. Finally, an important sign of respiratory distress is rapid breathing. Children will breathe faster in an attempt to get more oxygen in. As a parent, counting a respiratory rate is not required, but it is something a clinician may do, which is why I found it useful to include in this video for you. Parents should really look at the increased work of breathing like I mentioned, but be attuned if they're breathing more rapidly as well. Before we discuss how to count a respiratory rate, I do want to make one important distinction. Children with a fever often have an elevated heart rate and subsequently their respiratory rate can be slightly elevated as well. This does not always indicate respiratory distress. Therefore, if you notice your child is breathing faster, look for other signs of respiratory distress, like I mentioned. If no other signs are noted and they have a fever and they're uncomfortable because their respiratory rate and heart rate is elevated, consider giving them fever reducing meds like Motrin or Tylenol and recheck their breathing once their temperature comes down. If concerns persist, it's always best to bring them in for evaluation. But if their breathing has returned to normal and there are no other concerns, they can be monitored at home. And make sure to watch my fever video on my YouTube channel. Okay, so how do you check a respiratory rate? Here's a simple method. First, make sure the child is calm and resting comfortably. If they're crying hysterically, you may not get an accurate number. Ideally, they are lying quiet or sitting still. Moving around naturally increases one's respiratory rate and sleeping naturally lowers it. So it's an ideal situation that they are awake and still. I know this can be hard, which is why I don't expect you to do it. 
Then watch their chest rise and fall for one minute. Count each complete breath cycle, which includes one inhale and one exhale. The amount of breaths they take in one minute is their respiratory rate. So if they breathe 24 times in one minute, their respiratory rate is 24. And remember, accuracy is key in assessing the severity of respiratory distress. So if you're unsure or get lost in counting, start again. Here's a chart that covers a range of normal respiratory rates for children of different ages. Babies naturally breathe faster than toddlers and respiratory rate slowly decreases as a kid gets older, stabilizing once they reach adolescence to a normal adult respiratory rate. So a normal rate for an infant would not be normal for a four-year-old. And if your child's respiratory rate falls outside this normal range, further evaluation is needed to determine why. So what should you do if you notice signs of respiratory distress in your child? First and foremost, it's really hard to do, but stay calm and reassure your kid. Chances are, if they are having trouble breathing, they're already feeling scared and anxious. If you show worry, you'll only exacerbate their own fear, which can make it even harder for them to breathe. Second, consider where to go for medical care. A YouTube video on when to go to the ER versus the office will be coming next month to my YouTube channel, so be sure to subscribe so you don't miss it. But in general, if there are significant breathing concerns, it's best to go to the emergency room. They have all of the necessary supplies and equipment to manage respiratory problems. If needed, they'll also be able to admit your child into the hospital if ongoing respiratory support or oxygen support is required. If you are concerned of behavioral changes and or the ER is far, consider calling 911 to get medical transport and attention immediately. Remember that early recognition and prompt action are crucial in respiratory distress, which is why this video was so important for me to make. Stay informed and stay prepared and know what to do to keep your little one safe. You are your child's biggest advocate and sometimes knowledge about this is helpful so you know what to do. Has your child ever shown signs of respiratory distress? How did you recognize it and what did you do? I would love to hear any thoughts or experiences you have in the comments below. And if you found this information helpful, please like and share this video and make sure to subscribe to be the first to know about new videos published here on Pete's Doc Talk TV. I'll see you all next time for another video and stay well.